Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. I've looked a few times at which civilizations are best in 1 vs 1 matchups, and that's generally regarded as the purest way to compare civilizations. But do the results really translate to team games? You might think the list should be identical, as a strong civilization is always going to be strong, right? But it turns out, if we look at the stats, it doesn't always work out that way. 1 vs 1 Arabia games tend to be very aggressive and reward civilizations with strong early game bonuses above anything else. While that's still true in team games for the flank players, that is the players on the sides closest to the enemy, the pocket players as they're called in behind tend to have a different role with more emphasis on booming and making knights. Fast forwarding to the late game we also see another big difference, which is access to trade, making a lot of gold intensive units viable in team games that would be impossible to sustain with relics or just the gold given to you on the map. All of that together I hope explains why there's not actually very much overlap between this list and the 1 vs 1 Arabia list. A disclaimer about the results is this is all driven by win percentages for ranked Arabia team games across all skill levels over the last 3 months, so nothing is picked based on my opinion. If you go to aoestats.io, you'll see a slightly different list, especially if you break it down to a certain ELO bracket because of their smaller sample sizes. For example, in the last patch from 1000 to 1250 ELO, you're dealing with a sample size that's less than a 30th of the games that I'm using for this list. So you get nonsensical results, like Koreans are the number one team Arabia Civ, while also having the lowest play rate and being widely considered one of the worst. Team game ELO is also notoriously inconsistent, so you really need a large sample size for that to start averaging out. Also, just to warn you ahead of time, the differences might look quite a bit smaller than for 1 vs 1, but that doesn't mean civilization choice is less important in team games. Remember, you can stack multiple of these advantages on top of each other, and one team with 4 civilizations, each having a 51% win rate against 4 with 49%, is going to have a cumulative effect that gives more than a 51% chance to win the game with equally skilled players. So now that we have some context for the numbers, let's jump into the list starting with number 5, the Magyars, at 51.1% win rate. Again, I know a 1.1% advantage sounds pretty low, but it is statistically significant when we have so many games. As is going to be a bit of a theme here, Magyars are pretty average on Arabia 1 vs 1, but suddenly become top tier in team games. If anything, their 1 vs 1 stats are carried by their goldless unique unit, helping so much in late game trash fights. Whereas interestingly, in team games, it's actually in the early to mid game that they excel. So what's going on? Personally, I think this is a lot of 2 vs 2 games helping them out here, where one player opens with scouts and the other with archers is pretty common, because the two units complement each other's weaknesses. Magyars have discounted scouts and free attack upgrades, which of course helps their scout rush, and they're even giving their allies archers more line of sight. That's especially useful before getting a market, where having that extra vision allows for more coordination. Of course, they also do well as a pocket player in 3 vs 3 or 4 vs 4, where they can go for scouts into knights, or even directly into knights with free attack upgrades, and can eventually follow that up with paladins in the late game. Normally, paladins don't factor into 1 vs 1s as often because of their gold cost, but in team situations, paladins are a very common late game unit. Another option that can be too gold intensive for 1 vs 1 games is the Heavy Cavalry Archer, and Magyars have access to arguably the best one in the game with extra range and attack. If trading is an issue and you're having trouble getting gold, remember their unique unit is also completely viable in the late game. They're a great way to start the list as a civilization you might not expect to show up because 1 vs 1s really don't allow them to fully utilize their tools. Next up at number 4 with a 51.6 win percentage is the Mayans. This is another civilization that's statistically a fringe top 10 in 1 vs 1s, but in team games like the Magyars they really seem to excel. I think there's two main factors here working in their favor. First, they're always known for having a strong economy, with an extra villager to start the game and resources lasting longer. Add on top of that a discount for their archers and a strong unique unit to give them great value over time. Normally I think their lack of knights hurts them at lower ratings, where knights are a great counter to anti-archer units in the mid game, and players have less experience using eagles. I think that explains some mid game weakness they have in 1 vs 1s for all but the top 1% of rated players. With teammates though, that mid game becomes a strength, which I attribute to the fact their allies can focus on cavalry to deal with enemy anti-archer units, and the mine player can focus just on what they do best, which is of course archers. In the late game, access to trade is also incredibly useful for sustaining eagle warriors, so like Magyars, mines have some of their best tools coming to the forefront in team games, and we see a nice boost as a result. Next up in number 3 we have the Huns. Now since release, Huns have probably made any top 5 Arabia list, regardless of what settings you have in mind. 
Something about the combination of no houses, faster working stables, and discounted cavalry archers just translates into success at every skill level. Both their stable and archery range give a natural progression from scouts into knights and paladins, or archers into crossbows and then cavalry archers. You can easily switch between both buildings depending on your need, whether your flank or pocket, and whatever is going to complement your team. That said, there is a bit of weakness in games lasting longer than 40 minutes. I'd attribute that to their restrictive late game tech tree, weak counter units, and the diminishing importance of free houses once everyone's up around 200 population. Still, they have all of their usual 1 vs 1 options, and of course can also throw in the Paladin thanks to trade. Point is, you never go wrong with Huns on Arabia. Moving on, at number 2 we have the Franks. They've been incrementally improved through the expansions and are now, like Huns, consistently a top Arabia civilization. The game plan of scouts into knights and then paladins is one of the easiest to execute, more or less optimized, and at this point popular at every level of play. It's also a game plan that works well as both the pocket and flank, though personally I like them a bit better as pocket. In team games you're generally freed up to focus on stable units, while allies can cover your cavalry's weaknesses with their archers. I've heard some comments made over the last while about how archers are overpowered these days as a result of poor pathing of cavalry in Definitive Edition, but the stats across all skill levels still show cavalry civilizations are dominating team games, especially on Arabia. In fact, so far 3 out of the 4 on the list have been paladin civilizations, and I don't think that's a coincidence. Before we get to number 1 though, I have a few honorable mentions, with the Vikings, Slavs, and Britons all narrowly missing the list with an identical 50.6 win rate. Now these are 3 totally different civilizations with very different game plans, but somehow they all managed to get it done. The common thread, I think, is a lot of potential to boom on multiple town centers. Vikings because of their free wheelbarrow and handcart, Slavs with their faster farmers, and Britons for their cheaper town centers. What I find most interesting about Vikings is they seem to improve throughout the game, while relying mostly on Arbalest, Champion, Seedram, and Berserks. It just goes to show you don't necessarily need great cavalry to compete after all. Slavs are similar in that they seem to do best in longer games. Infantry and Siege is a solid combination in the late game that's hard to counter, and that's really their specialty, with some strong cavalry in the mid game as needed. Britons are of course also one of, if not the best, archer civilization in the mid game with their extra range, and are going to nicely complement a cavalry civilization in a 2 vs 2. There's also a couple of surprises for me that I wanted to point out, which are that the Lithuanians and Goths are not in the top 10. With the Lithuanian strong mid to late game cavalry, I expected a better result, especially with how much they can be helped by teammates contributing relics. The Lightest gives such great value in the late game as well, I just would have expected them somewhere near the top. Goths are even more surprising as a top 3 civilization in Arabia 1 vs 1, and a top 3 for team games overall, but for whatever reason they underperform when you combine those two things. It could be that Team Arabia is just so dominated by archers and cavalry that they fall behind early on, and they're part of a pattern of strong infantry civilizations doing well in 1 vs 1 games and falling off as more players are added. The most shocking of all for me though was the number 1 Arabia team civilization, which is the Indians. I think what surprises me most about this is they're not a great 1 vs 1 Arabia civilization by any stretch, they're not even average. They don't have knights, their archers are unremarkable, and they specialize in a unit that most people regard as underpowered. So why are they absolutely crushing it in team games? I think the answer is to look back at the list in this video. 3 out of the 4 are clear knight into paladin civilizations, making the choice of Indians more of a 4D chess move. You're assuming the opponent is going to play the numbers and go with a paladin civilization, which you then counter with imperial camels. It's a trick that doesn't seem to carry over for other camel civilizations since Indians have extra pierce armor and damage versus buildings, making them much better at raiding. Also don't forget their discount on villagers, letting them boom from multiple town centers more easily. What makes this extra weird though is that in 1 vs 1 games they have a losing record against Franks, meaning there's just something about team games that they're especially well suited for. Thanks to Jerbot at AoE Stats for the data, and if you want to see the current patch results yourself, there's a link in the description. If you want to support the great work he's doing for the community and help keep the site running, you can buy him a coffee through a link on his site as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.